This video is brought to you by Henson Shaving. Last Saturday, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan issued perhaps his starkest criticism of the US position on Gaza at a human rights event, saying a just world is possible, but not with the United States. This comes on top of another snub in November, when Erdogan refused to meet US Secretary of State Antony Blinken during his visit to Turkey, and described the United States as the main culprit behind Israel's actions. Despite being NATO allies, relations between the US and Turkey have been tumultuous for the best part of a decade now, burdened by mistrust, misalignment, and the absence of a meaningful dialogue between Erdogan and President Joe Biden. Unfortunately, things have hit an all-time low recently, and quite a bit of it is, unsurprisingly, to do with the war in Gaza. While the US has been Israel's staunchest supporter so far, Erdogan has been one of its loudest critics, describing Netanyahu as a war criminal and positioning Hamas as a liberation movement. So in this video, we'll look at the recent history of US-Turkey relations, how they've been further strained by the war in Gaza, and what might happen next. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's get straight into unpacking US-Turkey relations with a brief look into the events in the past decade that have shaped quite a rocky relationship. As we see it, the relationship really started deteriorating in 2011 with the Arab Spring. During these mass pro-democracy protests, Turkey ended up supporting rebels in many countries, which really upset US allies, particularly Saudi Arabia. As a result, Turkey and the US found themselves on different sides of the aisle in several conflicts, perhaps most notably Syria. Relations were strained further in 2016 after an attempted coup in Turkey. Erdogan blamed the coup attempt on Fethullah Gulen, a US resident, and demanded his extradition, which the US rejected. Erdogan was also upset by the West's response to the coup more generally, which mostly involved warning him not to overreact. A year later, in 2017, Turkey bought a Russian-made S-400 air defense system in defiance of the US, who duly imposed an arms embargo and removed Turkey from the US F-35 program. In 2019, motivated by anxieties about Kurdish separatism in Turkey, Erdogan launched military offensive into northeastern Syria, which were controlled by Kurdish forces with the support of the US. There were subsequent invasions in 2021 and 2022, and earlier this year, the US actually shot down a Turkish drone in the region. Relations improved somewhat during the start of the war in Ukraine, when Turkey mostly cooperated with NATO and blocked Russian military vessels from operating in the Black Sea, but Turkey-NATO relations have since been strained by Erdogan's wavering on Sweden's accession bid. You get the idea. Even before the war in Gaza, Turkey and the US had a rocky relationship, but the Israel-Hamas conflict has pushed US-Turkey relations to new lows, because quite simply, the US has been Israel's staunchest supporter, while Erdogan, keen to portray himself as a leader of the Muslim world, has been one of its harshest critics. While Israel and Turkey's economic ties have improved recently as part of a wider normalization process between Israel and its Middle Eastern neighbors, Erdogan has always been a furious critic of Israel's treatment of Palestinians. Nearly 15 years ago, in 2009, Erdogan walked out of the Davos World Economic Forum debate following a clash with the Israeli president over Israel's treatment of Gaza. In 2011, Erdogan even expelled the Israeli ambassador after the IDF raided civilian Turkish ships carrying humanitarian aid from Turkey to Gaza, which was under a maritime blockade. Despite signing a reconciliation agreement in 2016, Erdogan expelled the Israeli ambassador again in 2018 and stated that Hamas is not a terrorist organization, which he again repeated this year. Unsurprisingly, when Arab leaders went quiet in response to events in Gaza, Erdogan stepped into the vacuum to emerge as arguably the loudest anti-Israel voice in the region, and this has included attacking the US for supporting Israel. But while Palestine has always been a point of tension between Turkey and Israel, and therefore by proxy between Turkey and the US, the current Gaza crisis has been particularly bad for Turkey-US relations, for two reasons. First, the current government, led by Benjamin Netanyahu, has been more aggressive than any of its predecessors, both in its prosecution of the war in Gaza and its expansion of illegal settlements in the West Bank. In Gaza, the rate of casualties amongst both civilians and UN staff is unprecedented in modern times, and in the West Bank, Netanyahu's government has issued an unprecedented number of construction permits. Not only are these settlements illegal under international law, but they also make a two-state solution significantly less likely, because the establishment of a Palestinian state in the West Bank would now require the expulsion of thousands of Israeli settlers, which is politically impossible. This policy posture seems to be largely down to the fact that Netanyahu's coalition relies on the support of a handful of right-wing ministers from ultra-nationalist and ultra-orthodox parties, who've apparently been able to set the government agenda. The second reason is that, despite the fact that Netanyahu's government is more hawkish than any of its predecessors, the US has nonetheless been pretty much unwavering in its support for Israel, at least until very recently. In a sense, this is surprising, given Biden personally had quite a testy relationship with Netanyahu during the Obama administration, and that the US has historically supported a two-state solution, which Netanyahu has actively undermined both with his rhetoric and his expansion of illegal Israeli settlements. 
Some analysts have argued that the US's unflinching support for Israel is pragmatic because Biden and co know that Netanyahu is only going to listen to them if he trusts them. And the only way to win Netanyahu's trust is to support Israel absolutely. But whatever the case, this hasn't gone down well with Turkey. And the Turkish foreign minister recently warned the US against further obstructing the UN Security Council's ceasefire resolutions. You get the idea. The conflict in Gaza has pushed Turkey further away from the US. As we see it, what happens next and the future trajectory of US-Turkey relations really depends on whether or not the US tones down its support for Israel. It's possible things could get better here. Biden made his first public criticism of Israel on Tuesday, warning Netanyahu that he was losing international support. And Erdogan and Biden had a phone call last Thursday, their first exchange since the start of the war in Gaza. If relations don't improve, however, then it could undermine Sweden's prospective accession to NATO, which apparently came up during last week's phone call. One of Erdogan's coalition partners has already said they won't agree to Sweden's accession until there's peace in Gaza, which means Erdogan won't have a parliamentary majority to ratify Sweden's accession, and Erdogan himself has proven willing to play transactional geopolitics in the past, so it's not impossible to imagine him leveraging his veto over Sweden's NATO accession to pressure the US into winding down support for Israel. I've been using Henson's products for a few months now, and I really do recommend them from an economic, environmental, and shave perspective. Firstly, Henson's razors take entirely standard razor blades, which means instead of being forced to buy expensive replacement blades, including features you don't even need, Henson's razors cost about 10 cents each, allowing you to replace your blades more frequently and cut down costs significantly. Now, admittedly, the razor itself may cost more than other brands, but over the lifetime of the products, it quickly becomes a lot cheaper than buying all of those expensive replacement blades. Blades. This razor model is also better for the environment, with the Henson AL13 and all of its packaging being entirely plastic free. Plus, unlike those expensive multi blade upsells that other companies will push, even the blades themselves are plastic free, helping to cut down on the over 2 billion disposable razors that are thrown away every year in the US alone. Finally, Henson's beautiful razors are precision engineered by an aerospace machine company who previously built parts for the Mars rover and the ISS, which means incredibly tight tolerances, high standards, and superb precision. And all of this combined means that while a single razor blade might sound scary, I've found it far easier to use than other comparable products, with a precise shave plane of about 0.0013 inches offering a safe and perfect shave, while also minimizing the risk of ingrown hairs and irritation. So if you too want to try out Henson, then you can get 100 free blades with your purchase by clicking the link in the description, adding the razor and the blades to your basket, and then using our code. Thanks to Henson for sponsoring this video, and to you for supporting TLDR News.